Okay, so I'm going to talk about some work that uh, I've been doing uh, here at ICTS with uh, our session chairman. Uh, Manoj actually did most of the work. <laughs> so I guess uh, if need arises, then he can give me a little more time than 10 minutes. <laughs> Anyway, so this um, uh, work is basically trying to understand some uh, phase transitions in uh, the usualizing model, 2Dizing model, where you know in the equilibrium uh, one has exact solution and all that. Uh, we want to find out uh, what happens to that uh, very well-known phase transition when uh, you introduce non-equilibrium uh, behavior by going away from a detailed balance. So, <clears throat> I guess. Uh, as I said, you know, this work uh, was done mostly by Monoj, and then uh, a couple of years ago, there was a summer student who started this work, but of course, uh, didn't do a very uh, complete job, so uh, he should also be acknowledged. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, I'm sure all of you are, have heard about phase transitions in out of equilibrium systems. Uh, these occur in many different contexts, and in this uh, particular meeting, I'm sure uh, there have been earlier talks on uh, phase transitions in some model system or other. Uh, our interest in this uh, actually came uh, from uh, our uh, sort of uh, work on uh, what is known as active systems. Active systems consisting of particles uh, which have their own source of energy and uh, so they can generate uh, motion on their own uh, uh, without, uh, even if you know, there is no interaction with any other particle or any other external field and so on. So these active systems, of course, this study of this has become very popular these days, and many different phenomena in this system of acti uh, active systems are being studied. And the uh, interesting thing is that uh, some of these phenomena show things which are very similar to uh, phase transitions that you see in equilibrium systems. Uh, these systems are, of course, uh, essentially out of equilibrium because they can generate energy on their own. So when, whatever phase transition that one sees in such systems uh, actually will be a phase transition in an out of equilibrium system. And uh, one wants to understand uh, how the fact that these systems are not in equilibrium, uh, how that affects the characteristics of the phase transitions that one sees in these systems. In particular, uh, there is one uh, class of phenomena that uh, one sees in these systems, which is known as uh, motility-induced liquid gas phase separation. Now, in ordinary liquid gas phase separation, as you know, uh, is, uh, has a critical point and uh, it belongs in the uh, Ising universality class. So, a similar phase separation is seen in this, these models also, uh, but of course, these are out of equilibrium. So, one then wants to understand how the characteristics of an Ising like phase transition um, are changed when one introduces some aspects of non equilibrium behavior in uh, such a system. That is basically the motivation. And we were looking for not any particular physical system, but uh, we are looking at uh, some kind of a minimal way of uh, taking a simple Ising model uh, out of equilibrium. So, and the simple Ising model that we looked at is something that, uh, you know, statistical physics uh, people know a whole lot about. That's the uh, two-dimensional ferromagnetic Ising model on a square lattice with nearest neighbor interactions. So here, of course, one has an exact solution. One knows uh, at what temperature the transition occurs, ferromagnetic to uh, uh, paramagnetic to ferromagnetic transition occurs. Uh, there is a continuous transition, so there are critical exponents. Everything is known about the values of the critical exponents and so on. So what we want to do here is uh, sort of modify the update rules for uh, such an Ising model in such a way that uh, detailed balance is broken and then look at it and see to what extent it ex exhibits a phase transition. And if it does, then uh, how this phase transition is similar to or different from what you see in the equilibrium limit. <clears throat> so what I mean by update rule is uh, something again that uh, I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Uh, if I want to simulate this Ising model on a, on a computer, uh, one of the standard ways of doing is uh, some kind of a Monte Carlo simulation where the spins are updated according to uh, Metropolis rule, which is constructed in such a way that it preserves detailed balance. That the probability of going from one state to another uh, is related through this detailed balance to the probabilities, equilibrium probabilities of these two states. And uh, the usual rule is that, uh, let's say I take a particular spin, sigma i, uh, which is selected at random, and I attempt to change it, uh, flip its spin, uh, and uh, whether I accept this uh, proposed change or not, that is determined by the change in the energy, delta e, which would be caused by this, by this flip. And if delta e is negative or zero, then one accepts this change with probability one. If delta e is bigger than zero, then one has this Boltzmann factor that tells you about the probability with which this change will be accepted. And uh, this uh, 
is constructed to sort of uh, satisfy digital balance. So if you uh, continue to flip the spins like this for a long time, uh, it will generate a set of configurations which will be distributed according to the canonical Boltzmann distribution with the temperature T that uh, com comes in here. So this is a standard statistical mechanics standardizing model. What we do is we sort of uh, change this rule in a small way. Uh, this is the modified update rule. Uh, what we see, what we say is that uh, we have to define this new quantity, which is a small delta e, uh, which is the actual change in energy, and then we add it to it uh, some constant e0, which is a parameter now. E0 can be positive or negative. And then the flipping probabilities will determine according to whether this delta e is uh, negative or delta e is positive. And this is similar to uh, Metropolis, except that we are not applying Metropolis to this capital delta e, but to this small delta e. And uh, the effect of this uh, can be seen uh, without much of a problem in the sense that if this is negative, for example, this E0 is negative, then that uh, promotes, that uh, increases the probability of uh, spin flipping in the sense that, you know, so let's say this delta E can be positive and this E0 can be negative, the sum can be negative. So then this uh, flip will take place with probability one, whereas uh, in the previous case, if delta E was positive, then there would be this exponential factor that would determine the flip probability. So negative values of delta E, uh, negative values of this E0, basically says that uh, will we'll flip spins with a higher probability than what would be done with the Metropolis algorithm. And that is uh, similar to active system where there is an internal source of energy which sort of promotes the changes. Uh, <coughs> whereas if delta E0 is positive, that basically uh, it, uh, the dynamics here, the spin flip dynamics has become, uh, the probability of flipping a spin becomes uh, less. Uh, as compared to what we would have in the original Metropolis rule, and that we call anti-active or persistent or whatever you want to call it. So basically what we want to do now is to look at the behavior with the non-zero values of this E0, and then try to find out uh, what happens to the uh, usual Ising phase transition when this E0 is equal to zero. And uh, if we find the usual phase transition, then of course one wants to also understand, uh, tries to understand what kind of uh, <coughs> minutes left <laughs> okay so uh, then yeah I mean I will not have time to uh, go through many other uh, things that we have here uh, one thing that one can sh uh, one, one, one can easily see is that uh, uh, if this delta uh, so for a square lattice uh, uh, of course this uh, change in energy of a spin when it flips can be only discrete values uh, zero plus minus four and plus minus eight one can show that uh, if this uh, uh, E0 is less than this uh, minus 8J, then uh, you flip all the spins, because then this uh, small delta E is always negative, so all spin flips are accepted with probability 1, and uh, so that corresponds to basically having an infinite temperature. Where uh, other limit where this delta E is, uh, uh, when, when this, when this uh, E0 is bigger than 8, bigger than the maximum value that it can have. Then again, this small delta E is always positive. And then one can again work out the flip rates. And this again corresponds to a temperature, which is effective temperature, which is half of the original uh, temperature. In these two limits, when this, uh, uh, when one is uh, less than minus 8J, or when one is uh, bigger than plus 8J, in these two limits, the modified dynamics also corresponds to detailed balance with effective temperatures. In one case, it is infinity. Uh, always uh, spins are flipped. Other case, it is uh, a lower temperature, which is E by 2. In between, what happens is what we want to understand. Uh, we have done various things. Uh, don't worry about this. This is uh, what I, since time is limited, what I want to talk about, uh, uh, show some results is basically one can then study this uh, model uh, using Monte Carlo simulations with uh, uh, the new uh, update rule uh, for different values of these different choices of this E sub zero, which is uh, causes the system to go away from detail balance. And one measures the usual quantities, the magnetization, and this is the binder cumulant, this is the heat capacity. Uh, of course, I mean, you know, for a non-equilibrium system, one has to define things, uh, it's not the usual thing. I mean, this heat capacity in general will not be the same thing as the rate of change of the internal energy with respect to temperature. So we measure it through the fluctuations. Similarly, susceptibility also we measure through fluctuations. And uh, the bottom line is that I'll show, I can show you a lot of uh, nice pictures, uh, scaling pictures, finite size scaling pictures, and so on. Bottom line is that this model uh, for different values of uh, E0 also exhibits an order-disorder transition 
uh, which uh, seems to be essentially the same university class as what you have for the equilibrium Ising model. Uh, and uh, just show you one or two pictures that. Uh, uh, yes. So we study it at the different values of E0, and uh, one sees this uh, peak uh, at different temperatures. So the critical temperature certainly depends on the value of E0. Uh, or uh, we can do finite size scaling then to find out what kind of uh, university class this transition belongs to. And uh, for example, the binder equivalents uh, for a particular value of E0, uh, these are the different system sizes, and they show very nice crossing. That tells you about the temperature at which the transition occurs. Uh, near the transition, one can do, again, finite size scaling. This is uh, uh, heat capacity, and this is uh, susceptibility as a uh, function of temperature for different system sizes. And uh, using finite size scaling, one can collapse the data into a single uh, scaling curve, which uh, this tells you about uh, values of exponents that uh, one should use to basically uh, get this kind of finite size scaling collapse. Uh, same thing for magnetization. So the bottom line is here that uh, for easily equals zero, the originalizing model, of course, everything is known. The exponent values are known exactly. For other values of E0, where the system uh, does not have equilibrium in the usual sense, that where uh, detail balance is broken, one again finds exponents which uh, within the error bars are essentially the same as that for the uh, case where there was uh, equilibrium. So, uh, <coughs> et cetera. This I will not talk about. I'll go to the final conclusion that the steady state of the model considered here is not described by Bonson statistics that we can check explicitly. This is uh, some test that we had done. We don't have time. To, I don't have time to go to get into. But the phase transition in this model is uh, exactly in the same university class that of the equilibrium model. So the question is uh, this, that uh, when detail balance is broken, at least in this simple way, it seems that it does not change the university class of the transition. And uh, of course, I mean, you know, in the RT sense, then its uh, conclusion would be that if one can define sort of an extended uh, set of models, where some yeah. models, detail balance is there, some other models, detail balance is not there, uh, then uh, uh, they would, uh, from this, I would expect them to have the same kind of phase transition. So this is the general question that is uh, relevant or irrelevant in the denormalization group sense. Our results show that in this way, uh, uh, the changes that we have made are irrelevant, but uh, what happens in other cases is something that one needs to understand more generally. So questions? Remains to be seen. I mean, you know, this uh, model uh, is something that we have just begun uh, looking at. So dynamical exponent, for example, whether that is going to be the same or not, that at this point I cannot see. So I was... So I was thinking that uh, it's similar to this question, this introduction of uh, E0 is probably equivalent to, I mean, the problem can be mob mapped onto uh, external field. Uh, no? Because external field will break the up-down symmetry. But yeah. E0 so the, since you have critical point and all those things, it doesn't apply. Yeah. It's not external fields. The question is whether there's some other uh, equilibrium model which has up-down symmetry, uh, which can be mapped onto this one, which uh, I have not found. For the, uh, Values of easy which is minus uh, less than minus eight j or bigger than plus eight j. There we can find such uh, uh, models. But in intermediate values, I have not. Uh, where the but that could be a parallel way to understand that. Uh, I don't know. It's possible. I have to find out. For example, what is the microcanonical uh, microcanonical analog? Uh, of uh, uh, the model that I have just uh, considered here. In sort of that order. may give some suggestions about yeah. what. So whether, uh, what is the macrocanonical rule that would apply to such a model is something that we made various checks for whether uh, the uh, steady state that one is getting, whether that satisfies Boltzmann statistics. Of course, I mean, it should not because of uh, data. And so we see that one can, near the transition, one can sort of uh, uh, get uh, the same kind of behavior for E0, non zero, and E0 equals zero. But as you go away from the transition, then there are deviations. So that uh, is, in some sense, uh, similar to this being irrelevant. That uh, away from the critical point, there should be changes. But near the critical point, the changes should be. So let's thank Chandan for an interesting talk. Thank you. <laughs>